Hey guys, it's Sebastian from Asebi, and today we're going to talk about the best credit cards for Vegas. But first, if you are new here, we're all about how to maximize the value of our credit cards, so how to get the most cash back, and also how to travel for free. If that sounds interesting, then subscribe to our channel, but let's get started. The first thing we're going to talk about is getting status, and the second thing is other variables you might want to consider, so with other cards like the Amex Platinum card, the Fine Hotel Resorts program. With status, we're going to focus on the two big programs first, MLife and Total Rewards. Examples of MLife hotels are the Bellagio, Aria, MGM, Circus Circus, Luxor, Excalibur, basically half the strip. The easiest way to get status here is with the Chase Hyatt card, where you get to discover status as a default. By having discover status, which you get for free just by having the Hyatt card, you get Pearl status with MLife. Pearl status isn't that great though, it's basically just one step up from the lowest tier program, but it's still something. The really big benefit of Pearl status that you don't get of Sapphire, which is the default program, is that you get invitations for certain events and tournaments, you get a 10% bonus on slots and comps, you have a dedicated line at the buffet, again I go to Vegas for buffets so this is pretty helpful, and you also get complimentary self-parking. It typically costs about $12 for parking per day, so again if you're staying for quite a bit of time, it's going to be useful. The next step up from Pearl is gold status, and I think that one's a lot more valuable, but there's not really any easy ways to do it, either you have to gamble a lot, or you have to get status of Hyatt. With gold status, you get a 20% bonus in comps, you also have priority hotel check-in at the front desk, and also you get room upgrades subject to availability. One thing to be aware of is that the room upgrades exclude suites. A few other interesting ones if you are there to eat or to have fun is again you have a dedicated line for the buffet, and also at some other restaurants. You also get VIP line access for some nightclubs, for you and a guest. For parking, you get complimentary self-parking, but with gold status, you also get complimentary valet parking. For me at least, gold status seems like the sweet spot, so you're not really investing too much into it, and also not too little, it just depends on how you want to get that status. One really interesting thing is that Hyatt is currently running a promotion where it's going to be easier to get their higher tier status. Again, let me know if it makes sense to do a separate video on this, but if you are a Discoverist, if you're willing to stay 10 nights or 20 nights, you can get their top tier status. If you stay 10 nights, you're going to get Explorist, and if you stay 20 nights, you're going to get Globalist. The status that you earn is going to last until February of 2019, so you have almost a year and a half. You do have to register for the promotion by September 30th, and finish the requirements by December 30th, so if you do want to go for this, I think it makes sense. Again, let me know if it makes sense to do a separate video on this, just because it's kind of interesting, but also it might not be that useful for everyone. With either Explorer status or Globalist status, you only get MLife Gold, so not too bad, but again, if you're only going for MLife, I'd probably just go for Explorist. For the other half of the strip, you're looking at Caesars, and their program is called Total Rewards. These properties include Bali's, The Link, The Cromwell, Rio, Paris, Planet Hollywood, and obviously Caesars. If you want status of total rewards, the credit card you'd want to get is the Wyndham card. Barclays has two Wyndham cards, and they're basically the same name so it is a bit confusing. One has an annual fee, and one doesn't. The one that has a $75 annual fee gives you platinum status for Wyndham, and we're going to talk about how that works out for status matching. The one that doesn't have an annual fee gives you gold status. We're going to focus on the one with an annual fee though, just because gold Wyndham status doesn't give you anything for total rewards. With platinum Wyndham, you get platinum total rewards. This allows you to skip certain lines of VIP access, it gets you 15% discount off the best rates for rooms and suites, you get free self-parking and valet parking, you get a 15% discount at the gift shop, and you can also get a free trip to Atlantis. Atlantis is a whole nother tangent, so let me know in the comments down below if you want me to make a video on that in the future. If you have Wyndham Diamond status, you also get the same status for total rewards. The really big benefit of Diamond status is that you don't have to pay resort fees, and you also get access to VIP lounges. For anyone who goes to Vegas, resort fees are kind of a necessary evil, so if you can get rid of it for free, I think it's really amazing. Currently, there's not really a way to get diamond status though unless you do stay at Wyndham Properties or Total Reward Properties a lot, so you're kind of out of luck. If you do want platinum status for Total Rewards, I'd recommend applying for the Wyndham card with an annual fee. And again, if you do want to apply for a card and you want to support our channel, we have links on our site and it'll really help us out. The next two we're going to move on to have smaller footprints, but they're still very valuable if you do want to stay there. The first one is Cosmo, so the Cosmopolitan, which is owned by Marriott, and the second one is Weston, which is SPG. For Cosmo, it's kind of interesting just because they have their own program called Identity Membership, but the really sad part is that you can't actually do a status match, but they do respect your status. Flyer Talk has a bit more detail on this, but I'm going to try to summarize it. If you have Marriott Platinum status, you have a separate check-in area so it's a bit faster, and you also get an arrival gift worth about $10 or 500 points. You also get room upgrades based off availability, so if you do want an upgrade, I'd recommend staying midweek and not on the weekends. 
You also get free tea and coffee from 6 a.m. until noon in the Platinum check-in lobby. If you're staying at the property as a Platinum member and you're going to Wicked Spoon, you're going to get a 15% discount. If you have Marriott Gold status, you can check in and check out using the Autograph Lounge and you also get free coffee and tea there. You also get complimentary upgrades based off availability and you also get late checkout extended to 1 p.m. There's not really an easy way to get Platinum status, so I really just covered it in case someone is Platinum and they're watching this. For most people here, you're probably going to be focused on Gold status. To get Gold status, you can either have the American Express Platinum card, which gives it to you as a default, or if you get the Ritz-Carlton card, you get it in year one. We have a whole other video on status, so if you do want a bit more detail, I'd recommend watching that one. Something that's not listed in Flyer Talk is that if you have Gold or Platinum status, you can also skip the line for Wicked Spoon. Wicked Spoon's probably one of my favorite buffets there, so being able to skip the line is pretty awesome. The final one is Weston, and we're going to cover this one pretty quickly. Weston's off strip, but it's pretty easy to walk onto the strip through the casinos. Weston's been my go-to place this summer just because it's relatively cheap and you can still walk onto the strip. You can either walk through Flamingo or Bali's. I'd recommend Bali's though just because it's a lot easier. You do have to walk outside to get on the strip, but for most of the walk you are going to be air conditioned, which is pretty awesome for the summer. If you have gold status, it's pretty easy to get upgraded to either a higher room or to one of a better view. And again, you get gold status of Amex Platinum, or if you have the Ritz Carlton card, you technically get Ritz Gold, and then you can just status match it over the SPG because now it's part of the same family. One final path you might want to consider is the Amex Fine Hotel and Resorts program. So this one might not make sense for you depending on how you travel and depending on how much money you want to spend. The really big benefit for this program is that for some properties, they typically have promotions where if you stay three nights, you get the fourth night free. Going through fine hotel and resorts typically also give you other benefits like upgrades as well as breakfast and other dining certificates. Again, it really depends on the specific property. The thing to consider though is that most of the properties on here are more expensive, so you do have to do the math to see whether it makes sense for you. But again, if you're planning to stay there anyways, I think it's worth considering. One other thing you might notice is that the rates on their site and other sites might be different. So again, you do get other benefits. So maybe if it costs $50 more, but you're getting $100 or $200 in value, it makes more sense to pay that higher rate. I typically don't stay in Vegas for that many nights, so that's not too useful for me. But again, if you're staying for four nights, it's something to consider. So I hope that was helpful and let me know if you guys have any questions. My question for you guys is do you have any specific tips for Vegas? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, it really helps us out. And if you know anyone else who'd benefit from what we just talked about, feel free to share this video with them because it's probably going to help them out. But otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.